Yeah, I mean, frust- uh, as everybody that's been through it would know that um, lockdown was bad enough for everybody, but at least we had the opportunity to escape here and there. Uh, but then when you isolate, it obviously takes a completely different turn and it's frustrating for anybody to be stuck indoors. But at the same time, all of a sudden, when it starts to impact your job and your livelihood, and then it starts to have a, a knock-on effect to everybody around you, the, the frustration is uh, quite hard to describe, to be honest. Yeah, well, we heard from Danny Sender that you had a direct line of communication into the team. Um, from watching from afar, what, what were those key messages that you were trying to put across? Well, I think just to clear up for everybody what the direct line looked like, because I suppose that means that well, it sounds as if everything went straight into to Danny Dean and Matty on the on in the dugout, where that wasn't a an, an, a possibility of us being able to get that communication across. Whether it just means in terms of you know the, the reception and how we were doing it at Cambridge, um, so we had to alternate that between myself talking to Joe Austin throughout the game. We had you know we were we were consistently talking to each other and then when it came to substitutes it was about trying to get the message across as quickly as we could so it was then a case of calling Martin to be able to pass that message down to the dugout so unfortunately from my perspective the direct line that Danny mentioned didn't really exist at the weekend and that makes it really really difficult because um, you know we can't get I can't get clarified messages over and then the other side of it is they can't then talk t- talk back to me it's all becomes Chinese whispers in terms of how we get that message across so that was very very difficult um, I think my message at half time albeit amongst the opinions that the staff had got was that we needed to carry on as we were I thought we looked comfortable you know Cambridge had a couple of moments but I thought it was literally a couple of moments we probably didn't create as many chances as we would have liked but felt like we were the team that were in control of the game and very disappointed that we never carried on in that way and never built on that first half performance as has been the case a couple of times recently so um, yeah extremely disappointing in terms of the manner in which the second half panned out I, I, I don't think we were particularly bad in the second half I just felt there was two critical moments in a very short period of time that meant that we lost another game. So it's extremely disappointing because um, we need to do more to go and win those sorts of games. But like I say, for me, a um, horrible experience not being able to have uh, communication with the players, certainly, but at the same time for, for that communication with, with the staff to be so limited. Mm. Um, well, obviously that will... Sadly to say, that, that will continue for, uh, for the game against uh, Southend and, and the visit to Salford as well. Um, so we'll start with Southend and, and they've enjoyed some of the resurgence of late, haven't they? Yeah, you know, probably um, a difficult thing for people to hear me say, but Mark Molesley is someone that I worked with uh, at Bournemouth. He was still a player when I worked at Bournemouth. So when he took that job, you know, knew he was jumping from doing so well in the Conference South to to a, to a you know big job like like that at South End, and it's obviously been very very difficult for him in terms of the start to uh, to his run as, as manager or head coach at, at that club. You know, I know there's big rivalry between the two teams, but um, they've certainly turned things around in recent weeks. Uh, but I think we we keep saying it that the, that the league is full of that, isn't it? It's full of teams beating each other and creating different results and wins against teams that sometimes people don't expect them to come against. So, um, yeah, you know, a team, team on, a, on a good run at the moment, but, but, but we've, we've got our own, um, our own focuses and our own things that we need to get, get back to doing better. As you mentioned there, it's a game that does mean an awful lot to the fans. Um, and although they won't be able to be there tomorrow, I imagine it's something that will still be felt by the squad going into it, that it is quite a fierce rivalry. Too right. Yeah, too right. It's... Um, something that people are fully aware of you know we we um, have been without I suppose real big derbies I suppose we almost sort of tried to create one a little bit in the year was we were in the National League against Dagenham but we know that um, that the game against South End are always going to be big ones so yet yeah, people are fully aware players are fully aware I'll be driving the staff to drive the players um, in terms of understanding that and knowing what their responsibilities are to go out and get a result in a big game for everybody so yeah, it's a massive result for us as fans and the people that want the club to do well. And, and also, add, added to that, it's um, it's a big game in terms of us getting back on track. 
but in terms of preparation for the game, obviously you wouldn't be able to be at the training ground either. So, so how's that gone from, from your perspective? Horrible again. Um, back on back on Zoom calls more than I would would have liked. But I think like everything, we've got to embrace. Is that the right word? We've got to try to make the best of the scenario that I've found myself in and therefore everybody else finds themselves in. So um, we had a number of Zoom calls on uh, Sunday, what's the day today, Monday, yeah, Sunday, um, between myself and the different departments, if you like, uh, to make sure that we were organised. I think what is... Uh, really important for people to understand is, is that, of course, me being the head coach, I, you know, the final call on a decision to pick a certain player or play a certain formation sits with me and that's my responsibility. But the way that we uh, operate now and have operated um, certainly since I've been at the club is, is a real uh, variation of people's inputs. Everybody has a, as a say, everybody has a, as a suggestion and an opinion on what they feel is the right thing for the team. And that's training, selection, it's substitutes, it's a variety of different things where, where every, all, all of my staff are, are included in that. So um, that's the big thing that I've been driving with them in the last sort of day or so is to step forward and, and, and feel comfortable in terms of making those, those decisions. I don't want to see people doing anything too wild. Um, but we all know what we're aspiring for. We all know what makes us a good team. We always all know what, what, what makes us better. So as a collective, it's about us all mucking in there and people making sure that, okay, I, I drive and push for, for what I want to see and what I, what I want. But at the same time, I'm, I've got every faith in the capabilities of everyone that's at the club pushing it. So they good feedback today about training um, in terms of you know what was delivered, what we wanted, the analysis off the weekend that's hopefully going to help us understand what's what's got to improve off the back of the mistakes that were made at the weekend. So, um, like I say, every faith in what people are doing there, but it's a it's a horrendous experience being sat here having to uh, wait and find out what everyone else is doing and how it, how it actually goes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, tomorrow will be the last game of of the year, um, meaning that we'll see the, the transfer window open in January. You've alluded to already that some business will be done ins and outs, but I mean, how quickly are you hoping for that to be concluded? Concluded is always a difficult one because I think uh, the financial world we're in, the football world that we're experiencing at the moment will mean that if a certain amount of players were to go out, we would have the opportunity of bringing a certain amount of players in. Now, that's not necessarily saying that if five players go out that five players come in or three players go out that three players are coming in. That obviously depends on the, on the people that we sign and, and, and like I say, financially how that pans out. So I wouldn't like to put an actual date on it. I think like I always say consistent, consistently when it comes to the last couple of windows is that the sooner we can get our work done, the better it's going to be for everybody. I think the group certainly needs freshening up. It needs some, some new faces, some new energy coming into it. That's not talking anybody down that's already here, but I think most people would admit that, they, you know, it's time for for for, it's for, some, for a fresh approach and some new faces to come in to, to help the group. Um, obviously, we always want to get better and we want to bring, bring players in that are going to improve us. Um, and then at the same time, like I've said before, the outgoings are important. Um, our people, as I've said before, are, are vitally important. The health of everyone around the club and, and that sort of thing is, is massively. And if you look at what the future of football is going to look like, we need to give people that are not playing. We need to give people that are aspiring for, you know, continuing and developing their careers the opportunity to go and do that if they're not going to be able to play at Leighton Orient. Um, just finally then, going into tomorrow's game, I think the one absentee we saw from the squad was... Um... Hector Kipriano, I think it was a dead leg, you may have said. Is there any update on him and, and anyone else that may be in contention? Yeah, Hector's in a good state. Um, to be honest, it was more precaution, to be honest. He come on in the in the previous game, obviously before the weekend, and, and suffered quite a severe dead leg. He come out to train um, and it could he just couldn't he couldn't 
sprint. So it wasn't like one of those injuries of like tearing a hamstring or anything like that. It was a case of waiting for the dead leg to settle down. So uh, he probably could have been okay to go on the bench at the weekend, but we felt it was the right thing to do to give him a little bit more breathing space so that he could be uh, fully ready for today. So I fully expect him to be capable of um, pushing again for a, for a place this, you know, as we go into the next game.